lesson that we're talking about now is pre-algebra, unit one, lesson 12. We're talking about square roots. That's the main thing. Tonight's homework is study your perfect squares and do page 29 in your homework packet. Now, we are going to look at these two problems. If I do 4,500 divided by 9 tenths, I've got a decimal and a fraction. You cannot do this problem with a decimal and a fraction. So you need to either change them both to decimals or both to fractions. And I'm going to do this first one both ways. So I'm going to change them both to decimals. So our first one, 4,500 divided by 9 tenths, written as a decimal is 9 tenths. Now, dividing decimals, the first number goes inside the box. The second number goes outside. Move it one. Move the decimal place one. Come straight up. Nine goes into 45 five times. It's 0.5. The other way you could do this problem is change them both to fractions. So 4,500 divided by 9 tenths. Well, now it's dividing fractions. We change it to multiply by the reciprocal. First of all, I can reduce this first fraction by dividing by 5. So I'll have 9 twentieths. So 9 twentieths times, flip this, 10 ninths. Keep, switch, flip. Change it to multiply by the reciprocal. 9 goes into 9 once, into 9 once. 10 goes into 10 once, into 20 twice. When I multiply straight across, I get 1 half. 1 half and 0.5 are the same thing. So, this problem, let's change them both to decimals first. So, 8 tenths is 8 tenths times 30%, move it two places to the left, it'll be 0.3. So, 8 times 3 is 24. I've got one, two decimal places, so 2,400. If I change them both to fractions, I would have 8 tenths times 30 over 100. Let's reduce. This will be 3 tenths. When I multiply, I'll have 24 over 100. These two are the same. All right. Squares. Let's talk about numbers that are squares, and this is where they come from. If I find the area of this square, the area is going to be 5 times 5, 25. The area here, 7 times 7 is 49. The area here, 9 times 9 is 81. These numbers are what we call perfect squares. Okay, when you multiply a number by itself. So if I write 8 squared, that is 8 times 8, which is 64. That's why they're called squares, because it is the area of a square. Now, let's work backwards. This is learning how to take a square root. If I have the area of this square is 16, I know that the sides need to be 4, because 4 times 4 is 16. The area here is 9. This needs to be 3 times 3. So the square root of 9 is 3. To find the side length, you figured out what number by itself would be the area. This is called taking the square root of a number. We use this symbol for the square root. So, the square root of 49, think about what number times itself will be 49. That is 7. That is a square root of a perfect square. Now, we're going to use this concept to help us estimate, estimate square roots of non-perfect squares. So, 40, this is the square root of 45. That is not a perfect square. But, 45 falls between 36 and 39. 36 and 49, I'm sorry. Since the square root of 36 is 6, and the square root of 49 is 7, we know that the square root of 45 has to be between 6 and 7. Now, I want to be more specific. I'm going to take a minute to write this. Square root of 36. Alright, now, you're not going to write this down for every problem, but I want to write this so you can see what I'm talking about. 
The square root of 36 is 6. And the square root of 49 is 7. So, I'm looking at the square root of 45, which is located right there. If you look at where that is located, compared to 6 and 7, I would say a pretty good estimate would be like 6.7. Maybe 6.8. I wouldn't mark 6.6 .6 wrong, but I would definitely mark 6.5 wrong. Because, let's look here. The middle would be somewhere right about here. So, this is more than 6.5. So, I would say an estimate of the square root of 45. You can do estimate two ways. It's squiggly equals or an equals with a dot over it. That means approximately equal to 6.7. Now, let's take a look at this next one. The square root of 68 falls between 64 and 81. Since the square root of 64 is 8 and the square root of 81 is 9, doesn't the square root of 68 have to be between 8 and 9? Now, let's look at this. The square root of 68 is much closer to the square root of 64 than it is to 81. So I'd say this would be like maybe 8.1 or 8.2, approximately equal to. Alright, last one. The square root of 102 falls between 100 and 121. Since the square root of 100 is 10 and the square root of 121 is 11, 102 is between 10 and 11. But it's just a little bit more than 100. So I would say a good estimate would be 10.1.